Join the coven. I Hunt Reverse Vampires 2 A story written by Cecily 1987 Part 4 Continued from Celia Staub's Diary I ran up beside the new girl and pushed her aside so I could take the lead. I'm the one doing the rescuing, rookie, I said as I racked another shotgun shell. To her credit, Mika stayed close and covered my back. We moved quickly between ominous gravestones towering around us while creeping towards the sound of my aunt's rifle going off. What worried me is that I counted two different weapons firing back at Ma. So there were three wolves. I hated it when Ma was right. We turned a corner to come up behind a bleeding wolf mercenary retreating from the shootout. He was bleeding from multiple bullet wounds, no doubt from Ma's armor-piercing rounds. The enemy was facing away from us, but a strong maverick senses must have heard our footsteps even through the hail of gunfire. We were about 15 feet from him when he tried to turn spin and face us, whipping his rifle up to kill us. I reacted quickly by aiming my barrel low and let out a burst of flame and lead. My shot knocked out the back of his knee before he could fully turn. The impact buckled him as he dropped to land on the same injured knee. He let out a muffled cry of pain and began to rotate his hips to resume his attempt to line us up for a shot. Mika's rifle bang announced the instant appearance of a small hole above the eyes of the enemy's silver mask. He collapsed backwards with a heavy thump. I racked a new shell as Mika ejected the spent cartridge from her bolt action. I looked to her and spoke. We need to behead him before he regenerates. Do you have a machete or... I've got this, Mika said as she slung her rifle over her shoulder and pulled a string of gleaming wire that ran somewhere behind her back. She had a look of pure hatred on her face similar to the one Voss had when I had first met him. I didn't question the metal wiring or whatever the hell she had. She seemed pretty dead set on beheading the Mav herself. I understand having a general dislike for the enemy, but these Mavs had done something to seriously tick off Mika and Voss. I left her to her grisly business and scurried off to find my aunt. I kept low, scuttling between the gravestones for cover. As I neared closer and closer to where I had heard the gunshots, I hoped my current direction would have me flanking the last Mav, just like me and Mika did his buddy. But I came across Ma instead, ducked and clearing a stovepipe jam from her monstrous weapon. I let out a high whistling tune. It was a tune she had taught me to let her know I was coming up behind her so she wouldn't shoot me on accident. Ma just gave me her familiar, always frustrated look as I slid in beside her. Did you gank the other one? She asked, slapping in another magazine full of FMJs. Yes, of course, both of them, I replied. Good girl, now help me kill this jerk so we can start healing the others. I thought of Taylor, bleeding from his eye, and his teammate Voss looking like hell rolled over. We needed to get back to them. I was good at healing, and Ma was even better at it. Any other time, I would count Madame Monroe among us healers, but she looked like she needed some healing herself. Ma looked me up and down, and I once again knew exactly what she was going to say. You got the heavy plate vest. I'll put a quick taboo spell around your head. You lead me in so I can hammer this last one. Damn, Ma, I protested. 
Sometimes I think you forget your vest, so I have to be the tank. Ma gave me a dismissive tisk and spun me around to begin drawing out magical runes on my vest with a piece of chalk from her pocket. She began chanting the incantation for the taboo spell, and I joined in chanting with her. I felt the electric tingle of magic engulf my upper body. It seems Madame Monroe was still in the fight and lending us her strength because the spell activated quickly and with a lot more power than normal. Madame Monroe was scary powerful. Even as tired as she looked, she was amplifying our magic power from a distance. I thought a quick prayer, hoping she never decides to break bad and join the dark side. Having to fight her would be a terror that only few in Ahmet clan could handle. Ma gave me a pat on the back and grabbed my shoulder sternly, signifying me to lead the way forward. The taboo spell would be short-lived, maybe 30 seconds. It would cause searing pain to anybody who looked at me or even thought about me, other than Ma because she was a spellcaster, but we still needed to tread lightly. This was the wolf clan we were fighting, and they were professionals when it came to fighting against magic users. We marched forward, my shotgun held at the ready, scanning all the corners and shadows where the last Merce could be hiding. Ma was on my butt like she was super glued to it, as we maneuvered between gravestones. We heard him scream first, and we both spun to face him as he quickly ducked behind a waist-high grave. He must have popped out to shoot me in the stabbing pain of the spell, caught him by surprise. Hold! Ma commanded me as she took off running in a sprint out in front of me. For an old lady, Ma was still spry. She covered the short distance in seconds to vault over the grave our enemy was taking cover behind. To anybody else, this would seem rash and almost suicidal, but Ma was a veteran, like our enemy, and she knew he'd only be caught off guard for mere moments, so any signs of weakness had to be exploited immediately. I could see Ma from the waist up as she opened up with both barrels on the target hiding out of sight. The hail of gunfire pushed the enemy out into view. In one hand, he held the back half of a shattered rifle. Ma had targeted the weapon in his hand and blew it to scrap. His other hand grabbed clumsily at the pistol on his hip but he was missing fingers and his hands slipped and fumbled all over his retention holster. I had him dead to rights and cranked out three fiery shots from my weapon. The mercenary's bodysuit erupted in smoke and flames and Ma's bullets tore pieces out of him. He stumbled backwards and landed hard against a statue of the Virgin Mary. He was a bloody mess and made no attempt to grab for the pistol on his hip anymore. Ma slapped in another mag as I covered the motionless Mav. When she got within 15 of the downed enemy, she stopped, keeping her weapon trained on him. I used this opportunity to close the distance also, while loading in three more shells to my weapon. You gonna make us blow your limbs off so we can wrestle that mask off of you? Ma asked. Or will you admit defeat and let me grant you an honorable death? The Mav was breathing heavily and staring back at us with his emotionless wolf mask. After a moment, he slowly raised his good hand to the underside of his mask, clicked something and pulled the mask completely off. Midnight black skin with completely whited out eyes stared back at us. His eyes, a swirl of milky white, popped out against his bald, featureless face. His skin had a dark shine to it, like polished onyx. Even though I had seen them unmasked before, it still always weirded me out. All the wolf clan had these defining traits, 
one of the reasons they hid their faces to the world. The magical properties on their skin absorbed way more power from the sun compared to other mobs. The sun was like a drug that superpowered them, making them feral and uncontrollable if they didn't limit their exposure to daylight. The Wolf Clan had made a name for themselves in ancient times by wearing layers of fur and being so strong they could attack on nights of the full moon. The powers they absorbed from the sun could drive them mad, so they lived by a strict warrior code. They were more likened to warrior monks instead of the berserker of the old days. I take it you won't tell us who you work for. So I'm not even gonna ask, Ma asked. Even torture wouldn't get this wolf clan Mav to break his oath of silence he swore to his client. Believe me, we had tried numerous times in the past. The wolf outstretched its bloodied hand to display his middle finger at us, the top segment of the finger missing. He spit up blood and stared at and only stared at us, unblinking with his ghostly eyes. Celia, Ma said to me, and that's all she had to say. I fired one shot, blowing apart the Maverick's head, its burning brains flying up the statue of Mary. After that ugly business, we doubled back on the others. Madame Monroe was outside the gate now, putting pressure over Taylor's empty eye socket as he lay unconscious beside her. Mika sat on the other side of Taylor, reciting a healing spell under her breath. Voss sat nearby in a shadow of a gothic cross, exhausted but seeming okay. We finally had the time to introduce ourselves to the three new hunters. All the while... Ma complained about Ahmet sending newbies on such a dangerous mission. Monroe called for backup on her phone. Mika stopped Taylor's bleeding, while Voss weakly explained everything to us about what had been happening. They were after the entity trapped within the body we were protecting. It's Purple Eyes, a seriously scary supernatural being, Monroe said weakly. They hit my mansion last night. I believe it was Mavs with demonic help. This is uncanny. They... How do you know it was demons? Ma snapped, not believing the madame. I saw the shadow people. It's the imprint of demonic entities on the living plane. I felt their immense spiritual pressure too. Monroe snapped back. I could foresee another one of their legendary arguments starting to build like a storm cloud. Before Monroe could continue, all hell broke loose. Dark, smoky pillars of pitch blackness shot up in the air from inside the gated area. This should have been impossible. Monroe's spells had it locked down like Fort Knox, but the inky blackness raced up into the air. Taylor woke from his sleep and began screaming bloody murder. An instant later, we were all screaming. My head exploded in pain. My eyesight blurred and I fell to the ground. We were all on the ground, writhing like worms being dissected. I saw dark figures stepping out of the flowing beam of blackness. Three of them. Through the pain, I could barely believe what my magical sight was showing me. It was impossible. That's when I began to have a seizure. Or... So they all told me. When I came back into lucidity, Ma was crouched over me, looking like she was at death's door. She must have been healing me. Dozens of Monroe's men were standing around with rifles, surveying the area. I didn't see Taylor, Mika, or Foss, but Monroe remained. Where, where's Taylor? I asked weakly, trying to sit up. Pain raced through my body like I had every muscle on my body beaten with a bat. Monroe's men have taken them to the mansion to recoup, Ma spoke. We couldn't move you. It was touch and gunfire a while. I tried to look over at the above-ground grave in the gated area, but could see nothing. 
They got it, Celia, Ma moaned dryly. They opened a pit in the ground and swallowed up the coffin. You started having a seizure, Monroe said. Whatever demon you saw, it cursed you with something bad. Me and your aunt have been keeping it from killing you for 15 minutes. I would later learn why my scalp hurt. My hair was falling out in clumps. Almost all the moisture was evaporated from my body. And I would have bouts of blindness and deafness for weeks. It was a nasty hex. Whatever demon it was, it didn't want you to tell us who you saw. Monroe butted in. I could only see their shadowy outlines, their echoes. What did your magical eyes see? I sat for a moment and remembered. I shook in fear when the mental images came back to me. It was something more terrifying than any horror I had witnessed. Spinning wheels of gold and feathery wings. Multiple blinking eyes and fiery swords, spinning and spinning, a loud and terrifying voice sang in my mind. I felt small and scared, like a field mouse cornered by a giant, snarling, striped tiger. It was something my mind couldn't comprehend, so my magical sight tried to translate the images into a concept I could better understand. I remember all the images blending into blinding white light, then a silhouette of a man, and finally piercing blue eyes. Oh God, oh God, no! I mumbled in complete fear. No, not demons, I spoke, afraid of what I had to say next. It was their celestial brothers. They were angels. Angels are working with mobs. Angels stole purple eyes. Angels are our enemies now. 